More than ever, immunity is the most crucial requirement to fight against various diseases. There are many ways of boosting one's immunity apart from healthy diets. Most people are adopting various herbal products to improve their immunity. Some of these herbal products include elderberry, turmeric, ginger, and moringa. On today's episode, we are focusing more on moringa products and benefits. Moringa is a plant that is often called the drumstick tree or the miracle tree. It has been used for centuries due to its medicinal properties and health benefits. It also has antifungal, antiviral, antidepressant, and anti-inflammatory properties. Moringa has many benefits and its uses range from health and beauty to helping prevent and cure diseases. Some of the benefits include protecting and nourishing skin and hair, treating stomach complaints, improving eye health, and fighting against bacterial diseases. So Moringa is, 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 is known as the miracle tree ah. for so many reasons. Okay. It is a nutrient powerhouse, okay? Mm-hmm. So when you take Moringa on a daily basis, kind of like a multivitamin, okay? Yeah. We could even call it nature's cheapest multivitamin, but oh. it goes beyond vitamins. It yeah. has 92 vitamins and minerals and it has all nine of your essential amino acids. Wow. These are amino acids that are critical to the right healthy development of your cellular body, okay? So the way your cells reproduce, repair, and build themselves, it's all based on those amino acids. And the essential amino acids, many people are lacking those in their typical diets. And this is where a lot of the diseases in the world, in fact, the widest range of diseases are what we call dietary related diseases. It's a really big problem all over the world. And so when you take just two grams of this Moringa leaf, okay, Mm. when it's dried, two grams, I'll just give you an example of what that looks like. It's the equivalent of eating about, I would say this many leaves off of the tree. Okay, so like literally a full handful of leaves. And so it's known as nature's most nutrient dense leafy green. It has 24% protein and the beauty about plant-based protein and plant-based nutrients from nature, they're they're extremely bioavailable. It enhances people's digestibility, so it works with your digestive system and it has 46 antioxidant compounds which actively and continuously cleanse your body, cleanse your blood of all the toxins and all the dead cells and all the bad things that are not supposed to be there and flushes them out. So usually around day four, day five, people come back and they say, I need a lifetime supply because they're feeling amazing. amazing. It's one of the most nutrient dense in terms of vitamin A, which is really good for your eye health and so on. Mm -hmm. It has like seven times the vitamin A of carrots. It's really excessive amounts of vitamin A. And because it's so strong, we, we really suggest take two to three grams a day. Some people go up to five grams a day, but it depends on how it's processed. So by processing it the way we do, we're retaining all of those nutrients, all of those phytochemicals, and you're getting those benefits. It has 30, 36 anti-inflammatory compounds. Yeah. So it reduces inflammation. It helps with arthritis, back pain, sleep problems, eye problems, headaches, and it gives a lot of power, a lot of energy. So anybody who's working out or trying to increase their performance in any aspect of their physical physical self, adding Moringa to your diet may have a very good benefit for you. So we process it into a powder because it preserves the leaf, gives it a two year shelf life. Now on our products, we always put a one year uh, best before date because we don't know exactly how those packages are gonna be handled, Mm. right? Sometimes they can pop open during shipping and handling, but generally when, when you take all the water out, it also increases the amount of nutrients because you're removing the water so the amount of nutrients per gram increases, right? Okay. That's why I was saying this is looks like this would be like a teaspoon, oh, okay. right? So this whole thing turns into a little tiny okay. teaspoon. You take that once a day, and you're basically you're basically giving your DNA, your yeah. body. You're saying here, here's your precious metals. Here's your crown jewels, yeah. okay? Because these are the micronutrients that most people are lacking in their diets, and we've seen it in children that are malnourished. We've seen it in adults who are suffering chronic pain and chronic fatigue. It just literally wipes out most of those, most of those issues for them. Okay. And if it doesn't cure the disease, which if you talk to an Ayurvedic doctor, they'll claim it cures over 250 diseases. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't cure the disease that you're dealing with, 
it will improve undoubtedly, undoubtedly improve your quality of life okay. to such an extent that you're, you're feeling more comfortable, you're able to get more done, and you're able to move on with your life. Okay. We've noticed in Uganda, anybody who has ulcers, yeah. okay, in the stomach, or they think they have ulcers, typically within five to seven days, they claim, they're like, my ulcers are gone. Yeah. Nine out of 10 people, like 90%. They say my ulcers are gone. And if their ulcers don't disappear, yeah. they're, they've at least reduced to a degree that now they're able to eat the foods that they want, they're able to concentrate on their job, and they're able to get on with their day. In Uganda, Priceless Farms is one of the leading producers of Moringa products and also practices permaculture, which is the growth of agricultural ecosystems in a self-sufficient and sustainable way. This form of agriculture draws inspiration from nature to develop farming systems based on crop diversity, resilience, natural productivity and sustainability. So this is Priceless Farms. Yeah. Uh, Priceless Farms is like sort of the culmination of my 15 years of experience of trying yeah. to focus on how to solve youth poverty in Africa. Mm -hmm. And not only just Africa, but youth poverty in general. It just yeah. so happens that I chose to stay in Uganda because yeah. it's, it's one of the most beautiful countries in the world. It has a lot of problems that I believe can be solved. Yeah, and so this yeah. is Priceless Farms. Priceless Farms. Yeah. So I'm sitting on how many acres? Uh, we have 140 acres approximately oh, at, at this time. Now, um, Priceless Farm deals in what exactly? So Priceless Farms is all about uh, biodiverse agriculture. So okay. we, you could, there's so many different names out there. You can say agroforestry. Mm -hmm. You can say um, m there's many, many different ways of saying it. Permaculture. Yeah. Um, and so what we're focused on is herbal medicines and herbs. Mm. And so we're talking about the leaves of trees. We're talking about the seeds, the bark. Yeah. And basically looking at the forest instead of the traditional culture of looking at a forest for timber and, and firewood, which we do do, yeah. but rather as um, an amazing source of herbal botanical chemicals, just like a pharmaceutical company would source various different materials to make drugs, yeah. we use our trees and our forest to create herbal formulas wow. that are non-toxic, yeah. completely non-toxic. We don't deal with any herbs or any products which have any toxicity whatsoever um, and have a long history not only in Africa, but also Ayurvedic medicine, uh, which is out of Asia and India, um, for, for, for helping people cope with the various different diseases and stresses of everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. To understand more on how the Moringa products get to you, the consumer, let's take a quick tour of Priceless Farms production process. When a moringa comes from the garden, we receive it from outside, from that clean, tiled surface, and we always receive only and only green, fresh leaves. So when the leaves come in, they are weighed, they are rinsed off, then they come in here using these plastic baskets. It is from these plastic baskets that all the moringa is now then taken for the first soaking which soaking takes five minutes we soak all the moringa for five minutes here and this water that is always here has one one percent of the chlorine solution so after soaking it we may we, we, we soak it because we want to kill any germs that might have come with it from the garden then after the five minutes we rinse off our moringa for the first time then we rinse off for the second time after rinsing off then we shake, shake to make sure all the water gets off. Then the moringa is placed on these plastic tables. Once that is done, then the threshing is the, the threshing begins. We remove all the leaves from the leaf stalks. The leaf stalks go out because we take them back to the fields for mulching, because we have to give back to the to the to the soil. Then the leaves that we have remained with, we take them for proof racking. And the proof racking happens in this room, whereby we open this door. When we slide up this window, all the moringa that we've threshed
goes in there. This is for the purposes of transferring the product from here, from the wet room, now to the dry room, because that is where the drying starts from. When the moringa comes from the other wet room, it gets in here. Then it is pressed on these racks. These racks are made out of PVC pipes with a food grade mesh. Since we are dealing with a superfood, we have to use food grade mesh. We don't use things that, uh, that might contaminate our, uh, our products. That's why we recommend to use this food grade mesh. So the moringa, the leaves are placed evenly on these racks. So all these racks get full. Then we put, we switch on the fans, like this fan that comes from the ceiling. It is an extractor fan that gets the heat from up in the ceiling. Because all we need is to make sure that we dry our product without using uh, the sun, without using the direct sun. Because when you use direct sun, then you're losing a lot of nutrients that, uh, through diffusion because they can fume out. So we have to make sure that all our product is dried indoor. And to achieve that, that's why we had to put in such fans. We have a hot box that traps energy from the sun, then this extractor fan then brings that heat in here. Then we have another pipe just above on the ceiling, this one here. So this pipe comes from the fire furnace. We have a furnace outside whereby it is always running, it works on wood, and which wood we get from our own forest. So this one brings in hot air when the moringa is within here. Then the fans, these fans are distributing the, the hot air throughout the whole room. That's the, the, all that will speed up the drying process. Basically, our moringa, based on the energy that we have here, the product stays here overnight. Then the following day, early morning, we find when it has lost around 80% of its moisture. And there it is good to go to the dryers, as we are going to see. So when the moringa comes from the proofing room, now it comes in here, then we always press it on these trays. And on top of these trays, we put food grade meshes. So the moringa is pressed on such trays evenly. Then it is then transferred into the dryer, where it will stay for between three to four hours, and then it is completely dry. After the three to four hours, time is done we get to know that our product is dried looking on these thermostats. Because when this thermostat shows me the temperature at which I wanted to dry it, and it's showing the same as the lower one, then that means that whatever is in there is all dry, evenly. The water that we use to clean our moringa or our products that we are processing from this facility is very clean water. That's why we had to invest in all these purification systems. Because without this, then your water will not be so clean. Because our water that we use comes from the lake, it might be having a lot of stuff that we may not desire to have in here. So that's why we have this filter, it is pre-filtered from this, it gets filtered from this one, then we continue and filter it through these ones, then later on, uh, it gets into that tank. This is a stainless steel tank because we are dealing with food. So that's why we are using only food grade materials. Then from that tank, that's when the water flows into those troughs. But then we are sure and rest assured that the water is so, 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 so clean for use. So this is our battery bank whereby we never run out of power because this is all we need. Because this is relatively cheaper compared to this grid power that we have. Because here we are only utilizing the power or the energy from the sun, and it's just nature. So we try to make sure that we use technology and science to utilize what nature has provided for us. Now this is the, the powder room. You will feel it because it is hot. You can feel now the temperatures in here are much different from the ones that were in outside there. This is a hot room. Because we don't want any moisture in this room, because moisture might get into our powder and then it starts molding and we don't want that. How do we achieve this? We have a, 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 a heat box up, up above into the ceiling that makes this room hot. Then also use this humidifier. 
So the humidity is always between 50 and 60. It doesn't go higher than that. So this, this is dry enough air for us to process. This is now the dried Moringa leaves. He just removed it from the dryers. So this is then put into this cutting machine that cuts it in two smaller particles, like as you can see here. So this has been run through this. Because we want to do, because now the, the batches that we are producing are for tea, we don't want the fine powder. It has to be a bit fluffy, so it doesn't have to be fine. So that's why we are using only this. So this is the product that we get then later after, after cutting. Don't get, get me a spoon, please. That is the product that we use to make the teas. So then if we want to produce the finest powder, then we proceed and put such a stuff in this grinder. Sorry. This grinder will help us to make it so fine based on the grade that we want. Because we use different, different grades with the meshes. So the mesh that we install into this determines the grade that you want to produce, but this is fine powder. Then from there, this is the machine that we use to produce the sachet, the tea, tea sachets, the Moringa tea sachets. So this, 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 this product after here, after sieving it, he has to bring it in here to produce the sachets. And those sachets are good for everyone because people might not afford to buy those bigger sachets of the Moringa, which are a bit expensive, but they can afford those small, small sachets. So that's why we brought this. This has been just newly brought in here. Then when that is done, especially he has done the, the, the sieving and the, the grinding, now this is the product that comes. When you check this, this is now the Moringa powder. It is so nice. So we prepack it in such packets. Then from here we take it to the store, which is adjacent to where we are. Then until we get the orders, then we package it based on the client's need, because it is the client that tell us how their packages should look like. Then it is then that we get it from here into such such or such packages. Then waiting for shipment. I don't know if you, you can see this. So in the seed pods, yeah. which are prolific we have one of the finest cosmetic oils. Okay. So when you press this, it has about a 40% yeah. or higher oil content, which means it's got a lot of oil in it, mm -hmm. okay? And it's extremely good for your skin, okay? But the oil has other uses as well. Mm -hmm. For us, for Priceless Farms, we use this to plant the trees. So all of the canopy and all of these seeds that you see here that we're collecting, right now our motivation is to expand the Moringa industry Okay, and then eventually start to press it for oil, for beauty, beauty products and cosmetic products. It's hyper moisturizing, protects your skin, and uh, it's, it's known for increasing the elasticity in your skin, wow. which is sort of like the key to looking young. Yeah, right? I'll be a fast customer, no worries. Yeah, it's there. There's a company actually called Rain Tree Farms. Uh. They're also an amazing Moringa company. They're okay. a Ugandan-based company. I would encourage you to go shoot their yeah. farm as well. But they've gone very strongly into producing the oil. It's called Quezi. Their yeah. product is called Quezi. Oh, yeah. And I strongly suggest get a bottle of that. Now let's just turn to the business side of everything. Yeah. Let's talk about the Moringa. You yeah. know, is the market there for the Moringa, for the herbs that you grow? Do you think the market is there? How is it? How are you getting into the market? Okay, so so basically, to get into the market, you have to have very high standards. Mm. Okay, because as soon as you start talking about healthcare products, yeah. you're talking about customers who are buying typically very expensive commodities and products, consumables, mm. because they are health nuts or they're really concerned about their health. Mm. So if your standards are not there, if your processing is not good enough, if your, if your production model is not good enough, mm. you're gonna have a really hard time, okay? You're, you're gonna be able to sell to local markets, you know, yeah. off the back of your truck kind of thing, but you're not gonna be able to build a real enterprise. Mm -hmm. So talking about the markets, if you do your research and you go online and you type in um, herbal medicine or herbs market, yeah. the global market, in 2019 it was around it was above 80 billion 
yeah. globally. So in comparison, coffee is around 20, 23 billion mm -hmm. globally. Coffee. Yeah. Do you know how big coffee is? Like, wow, coffee is a yeah. huge industry. Herbal industry, which is huge in China, it's huge in India, mm -hmm. it's absolutely mass massive and it's growing in North America and Europe. It's been it, traditionally in Africa for a very long time, but it's more of like a home remedy. So it's not really like in Africa, it hasn't yet reached that point like China where it's a full on industry. Mm -hmm. So in 2019, the, the whole herbal global market was around 85 plus billion. In 2030, guess what it's projected to be? What? Just guess. By 2030, that's, uh, that's what? That's nine years from now. A big percentage. Just guess, just guess. How many billions, how many billions do you think? I really can't tell. 550 billion what? globally. That's how fast it's growing. So it's one of the fastest growing markets in the world. Now, if you think that right now, if you if you look at those numbers, yeah, this is like, this is yeah. like astronomy. It's like we're going yeah. into astronomy. Yeah. How far away is the sun type thing? Yeah. Going from 80 billion to 550 billion in 10 years. That's the literal projection because it's growing by 18% plus yeah. per year right yeah. now. So to me, yes, the market is there. Oh, okay. And not only is the market there, yeah. but I truly believe that this is one of the last massive industries like gold, diamonds, and oil yeah. for Africa mm -hmm. to capitalize on. And the Priceless Farms model, what we're trying to prove to people with our product line mm. and with our processing is to say, look, here's a multi-billion dollar industry that literally reforests Africa. Yeah. Giving you back your water supply, giving you back your soil fertility, giving you future housing and employing everyone under the sun. Well, let's backtrack. Um, can you tell people how you actually got the funds? How did you acquire this land? You know, because we have people who actually want to try out you know, with the farming and that's kind of stuck on capital and whatnot. Yeah. Can you give us a word on that? Uh, okay, so I did not ask for people's money for five years. When I came back in 2010, so yeah. in 2008, I left the country to go study permaculture design. Okay. I knew that I wanted to leave film and, and move into forestry some capacity. And I started studying permaculture. So I spent about two, two and a half years out. Yeah. By that time, I had designed this system in my head because permaculture basically is what we're doing. Okay. Um, but I wanted to tailor it to Uganda. And I knew that I was a novice. I knew that I was learning still. I started t teaching other people permaculture, what I had, what I had learned, mm -hmm. what I thought was worthwhile, understanding sunlight, water, soils, plants, animals, and how they all interact. Yeah. I think it's phenomenal stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do was train as many people as possible and I had amazing success with that. Okay. And so from each success, I changed and manipulated my business model, yeah. my business plans. Mm -hmm. So by the end of five years mm -hmm. of focusing on training, I created Roofings Forever Forestry Guild with Oliver Lalani and Sikander Lalani of the, yeah. of the Roofings Group. That was three years. Yeah. We trained over 700 people. Wow. So I had this immense experience that sort of harnessed my business model into, an, into the right shape. And it was around that time that I started getting confidence to say, I want to go bigger scale. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we had done many, many, many different smaller plots, mm -hmm. but I wanted to prove it on a big scale. Mm -hmm. So I asked my friends and one of them at the right time with the right amount of money, he said, I'm totally down to do this. There was actually two friends, um, but uh, one of them really, really had the capital yeah. and loved the idea. Uh, he was going into retirement mode and um, yeah, so we privately financed the, the group, yeah. uh, the company, and then I also kicked in money from my family as well. Okay. So I guess in that way you see that I'm very, very lucky. Yeah. Extremely lucky. We can say that. Um, because I have access to people with high net worth, mm -hmm. but they never would have given me their money if I didn't do my due diligence for all those years, because I did five years of training and learning and fine-tuning myself yeah. to become somebody who could run a company like this mm. and before that I did two and a half years of studying yeah. right so I really think that if you get a really good business plan together and you can prove to investors that you know what you're talking about because you've got the experience then you can find the money 
Oh. And eventually, if everything goes well and I get some of those billions, then I'll finance your project. Yeah. <laughs> so you can come to Priceless Farms. Yeah, and, we hope that yeah. happens. Now, Mr. Aaron, one of our viewers could wonder, why did you pick Kayunga? Because it is really, really far. It's literally at the end of the world. Why did you pick such an area? Why did you decide I'm going to come and settle in this place? Okay, so there's a couple reasons, but yeah. the, the primary reason is that we wanted to choose a piece of land that was very difficult to be able to show that this system of reforestation works. Yeah. So permaculture design thrives on rehabilitating damaged landscapes. Mm. Okay, it's one of the aspects of what we're what we're doing. The price was also very very affordable. Yeah. Okay, per per acre you pay a much lower price the further away you come. Yeah. However, you have to be very careful as a business because now your cost of transport is high. Is really high. Yeah. So your monthly expenses go 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 way up. What we're really doing by coming out to a region like this, which is generally forgotten by the rest of the modern world, True. is we're, we're working with the most destitute communities and we're working with some very badly damaged land. Okay, this, la this whole landscape was stripped. For the last 20 years, monoculture of maize and beans maybe, and a lot of cattle rearing. So the charcoal industry comes in first clears the forest right yeah. and the timber industry yeah. then the cattle comes in then the peasants come in to do their their maize growing yeah right and so over time the soils become quote unquote tired as they say in, in in uganda it was a challenge for us to be able to say look this is a global problem that literally threatens every single person's well-being and we want to prove to the world that by coming to an area as difficult as this that we can very rapidly regenerate the forest and heal the community financially and physically. Yeah. Also, yeah. we're on the Nile River. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got Lake Choga, which is 664 square miles of open water. Yeah. And there's no tourism in the area. So once we open up the ecotourism thing, we'll be yeah. the we'll be the first like real legitimate tourism location here. Yeah. So it's a very unique part of the country. I think there's a lot of value out here to be had. We just need to see it for what it is. You know? Now, moving on, just like anything in life, you know, nothing is smooth as, you know, people want to show you. So what are some of the challenges that you've faced on Priceless Farms? Oh, man, the, um, the climate. Oh, the climate. The climate. When we first came here um, in 2015 yeah. and 2016, there was a severe drought. Okay. So like no more rain. And everybody was crying and all the local people were saying, this is the worst we've ever seen in our whole life yeah. with no rain. And we had just planted all our trees. We lost 95% of all the seedlings that we planted. So then we had to invest in a water system. Yeah. Okay. Really which is this, that. we're literally sitting on the pipeline is right behind the cameras there. It goes yeah. two kilometers down to the river yeah. and it pumps about 40,000 to 60,000 liters a day on solar panels, just the solar pump yeah. up to our up, up to our water tower. From there, we started getting higher survival rates. Okay. The weather was so harsh, we sometimes we think the bushes just catch on fire on their own. Wow. So, and then we've also experienced flooding. So come 2019, 2020, we had massive floods in the region. As yeah. you know, Lake Victoria rose. rose yeah. So that's when I say climate is like these immense fluctuations, okay? And that was like the worst flooding in 30 years or something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The lake literally rose by 10 feet yeah. on our site, swallowed up our entire fish farm, swallowed up our, our we had a black soldier fly maggot system for yeah. feeding, that was just getting started. All the infrastructure is still underwater. You can just see the tips of the buildings sticking out. Wow. And swimming around it, you have crocodiles and pythons. <laughs> I'm um, now moving forward. Um, any last words you have for you know someone who wants maybe be like you and start up priceless farm? Yeah. You know someone who wants to follow in your footsteps. Absolutely. Um, so I think when you when you when you take a step back and you look at what we've done here, we've we've created an, an experience for people to learn from, mm -hmm. and you'll see that in our products. Oh, like, speaking of learning, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Um, do you you also offer training services, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just to clarify. As I said, we spent I spent the first five years back yeah. specifically developing curriculums and refining my curriculum. So okay. we have over four different training workshops depending on how much time a student has yeah. and also what they're looking for. But we're also now launching another company to do consulting okay. so that we can actually give all of our experience and all of our losses yeah. 
to clients who are looking to mimic or develop a similar business model. We can come in and support and help you so that you don't make all the losses that we have. That you made. Yeah, we've made an immense number amount of losses. Mm -hmm. I think I think a lot of people their businesses fail because they think, you know, oh, it's only going to cost two hundred and fifty thousand mm. dollars. Next thing you know, they're five hundred thousand dollars in, and they're still experiencing difficulties. You know, so people under budget. Yeah. Okay, it's not cheap to get something like this started. Mm. But when you look at the end result and the money-making machine that you can have, mm -hmm. I mean, the soils and the sunlight and the biodiversity that we have in Uganda, it is a massive industry to get into. Mm. But you do need to really seriously look at the lessons that have been learned by people like us to be able to succeed or go out there and do it yourself. So my suggestion is like do it small scale. Okay. And yeah, for training, we're definitely reopening our workshops. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll start posting again about when people can come. Okay. Yeah. Alright guys, we've come to the end of this episode. I personally learned so much about Moringa and how to run a farm on a large scale. Now we do hope that you learned something, get back to us in the comment sections and in case you're looking for the contact of the owner of the farm, just go down to your comment section, right? The first comment pinned right there, you find all the contact info, you can contact them, learn something or buy something. Now while you're doing that, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on all our social media pages, Kangana Nation Instagram, Kangana Nation Facebook, Kangana Nation Twitter. I'm your host Janita, we'll see you next time.